Welcome to the Rock the Stage Show. Each week, international media expert Rich Bontrager has in-depth and personal conversations with celebrities, top leaders, authors, speakers, and media professionals. Now, from the Rock the Stage studios, here's your host, the Trigger, Rich Bontrager. Well, 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 welcome back. Rock the Stage Show. It's Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. We're gathered all together once again to have another great discussion with another amazing person. This time we're getting back into the author space, but I'm going to tell you in advance, this ain't your normal author. <laughs> we're going to have a lot of fun here tonight, and we want you to uh, participate. If you're in the YouTube uh, live chat party, we have every Sunday night at 7 p.m., Drop your questions in the chat, and we will participate, chat back with you, have a good time. So please do that here or on PPN, the Public Place Network. We're so excited to be on PPN. We're now streaming in 17 different countries weekly with our shows, and it's going up and up and up. So you're helping to make it all possible. Share it with your friends. Let people know, and don't miss any edition of Rock the Stage Show. But tonight, I'm going to open up another one of those great, fun questions. You always know what's coming at the start of Rock the Stage. But how many days of your life do you have left? And right now, you're going, Trigger, what are you talking about? How many days of your life do you have left? Have you ever even thought about that question? Are you counting your days forward? Or are you counting your days looking backwards? And... Do you ever feel like you're living now your own version of Groundhog Day? Great movie, but no one ever wants to live it. When it comes to your perspective on life and living, how are you doing? Tonight, we're going to explore how to wake up and live a more astonishing, alive life. How does that sound? Don't you want to get into that tonight? Well, tonight, my guest is going to get into that because we're going to get into this kind of touchy, sensitive, but very exciting topic that no one wants to talk about. Life and death. Jody Wellman is a speaker, author. She's an assistant instructor at the Master of Applied Positive Psychology program at the University of Pennsylvania. She's the founder of the 4000 Mondays, which we're going to get in here tonight. And she really wants people to live a squander free life without deathbed regret. By the way, she's been featured on Fox Business News, the CW, ABC TV, the Daily Blast News. And now we have the privilege of welcoming her to Rock the Stage Show. Welcome, Jody. Oh, it's great to be here, Rich. I've never been so openly described as a not normal guest. I feel so honored. <laughs> I really feel touched. I've no one's accused me of being normal. Thank you. <laughs> There's a sound bite there for you. Up did that sizzle reel. Boom, right there. Hire Jody. She ain't normal. Uh, <laughs> I own it. So this is going to be a fun, fun interview. I, I tell you, but uh, you're talking about a subject that people usually run from. Let's be honest. Yes. Life, death, looking, counting days. Mm -hmm. What yeah. got you into this? I know it's ridiculous, right? Yeah. And the thing that got me into it, I mean, I've always been fascinated by the absurdity of the human condition right? We okay. all work so hard. I've been very interested in self-help, early careers and helping people, leadership development, coaching, like let's live our best lives. Absolutely. And then we're all going to die. It's bizarre. And so that all that reality, it's a branch of philosophy called absurdism. I've always been nodding right where with those old guys. Like, yeah, that is absurd. So number one, philosophically, I found it to just be, I mean, it is, it is, um, it is horrifying. Yeah, And then what we do is we deny the inevitable. And then I found that interesting from a psychology point of view, then going yeah. and studying psychology in grad school. So, so much of this came alive for me. Ha ha ha, get it? The death part came alive for me. Um, when, <laughs> when I studied positive psychology, because I did my thesis on this topic of memento mori, which is the Latin phrase for remember we must die. And I was blown away by the heft, like that there is research behind this. And that gave me, quite frankly, like the confidence I needed to just change my life trajectory and be like, oh no, now you are allowed to talk to corporations about this and to so, the groups because and now it's legit. And then I just, I'm up and at him and I'm no, no longer held back by the fear of like, how do I talk about the Grim Reaper without turning everyone off? Well, but I love this phrase, mm -hmm. memento mora, but 
we have to remember that we're going to die. Don't we all know that? Don't we, don't yeah, we know we, death is final for everybody? Rich, you know we do fancy footwork. There's no, I mean, if anybody just found out tonight, sorry about your luck. Like, yeah, it's happening. Hopefully, like, not for a while. Yeah, we all know it. But it's also kind of like how we all know we're supposed to eat more leafy greens. You know, we, we need reminders. And I'm just the friendly reminder that is like this Grim Reaper sidekick. It's like, I want to remind you that you're a ticking time bomb, honey bunny. And in light of that, so I don't want to dwell there, like, oh, yeah, I'm yeah. done with it. But it just to be super clear, for those who are thinking of abandoning this, <laughs> this, this session today. They're 10 minutes in, they're gone already. Thank you, Jody. <laughs> yeah, right. I better not die. No, this is, we're not going to linger in the morbid. Like, this isn't meant to be totally macabre. It's like, yeah, I want to provide just enough of a little existential poke in the ribs yes. in order to do the thing, which is what we're talking about, which is like, seize the day because like our days are diminishing so it's meant to be used to live better not to you know not to like have a pity party that we're totally dying well, right but there is something about that groundhog day that i mentioned in the open there is something about i'm on a perpetual wheel going nowhere <laughs> and what do you say the people stuck in that frame of mind they're not counting days mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they are probably looking backward more than looking forward yeah but what's that mindset of, yeah. I'm a zombie walking through this life and I'm not alive. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, there could be a bunch of things, right? Like on one end of the spectrum, it could be clinical. And I'd always encourage if someone's feeling very much in the dead zone for a very long time without hope, yeah. go and get that looked after. But for most people, we do find ourselves locked into some kind of autopilot, like you described. Like I call it highly functioning zombies, you know, where we have mastered the craft of like getting through our days and we want to be efficient. And I'm like, I'm the anti habit routine person. I could go in a cage match with James Clear or Charles Duhigg. Like I dare them one day to like fight me on this one um, because we get glossed over and we go through the motions. Like doesn't even that expression going through the motions of life, doesn't it horrify you? Because and believe me, I will poke, I will, I will disparage, I will sound like I'm judging, and I'm judging myself. Like I'm in here right with us. Like I'm not trying to pretend I've got this all yes. mastered. You know, um, I know better and I don't always do better, but I'm I'm like a test case. So we have to do things to snap out of autopilot because back to the idea, taking life for granted is no recipe to live like we mean it. It's diminishing, Rich. It's diminishing. <laughs> so I got two different things about Mondays. You talk about Mondays. Yep. Now, yep. I love Mondays, but I have this weird philosophy. Every day is a great adventure. Mm. So I'm kicking off a new week of a great adventure. Oh. Sunday, to me, is like the pregame warm-up for the great oh. new week, okay? Wow. That's how I see it. I mean, the football game, the crowd's going, I'm ready for Monday. Yeah. But you talk about how many Mondays do you have left? Yeah, yeah. Allow me to back up a hot sec and just acknowledge that you are also not normal. <laughs> Thank you. you, look forward Thank to you. I, I will own that with a bear hug. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and it takes one to know one. I get you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whereas I, I called my company 4,000 Mondays because I'll tell you why. And then I will also admit that I think Mondays, you know, um, they need a little help in the PR department. Um, Fridays yes. will always win. But Mondays are a litmus test for life, right? Mm -hmm. For at least for those of us still working. And even research is clear for those who have retired, like they still have feelings about Mondays. Monday is going to be a highlight or a low light. It's going to help flag for you whether you are just settling and tolerating a job that you no longer find alivenating or, you know, whether or not like, like when you count how many Mondays you have left, which is my core of my existence and recommendation, anything I do. And I have, by the way, there's a, um, there's a page on my website that does the math for you if you're not interested in wasting your time in this precious existence doing math. But like I have 1,819 Mondays left on average. Well, and like the average person, according to your studies, I believe 4,000 days is the average amount of Mondays we have, correct? Yeah, 4,000 Mondays. So 4,000 weeks takes the average person to 80. So if we're going to get persnickety here, uh, men live till an average of 78 and women live till an average of 83. And you but, said something, I just yeah. want to comment, like you commented about how many people will look backwards yeah. and that you are right. Like to ruminate about the past is not usually super productive, right? Oh. Right. Like reflect on stuff, learn, and then go forward. Um, but I'm just hell bent. Like it's only when we are aware of that number that is the, the left, like the, the, the sands in the hourglass that have left over. It's yes. only when we tune into that, 
that we feel a sense of urgency to get on with it. I love so, you laughing at this. I'm going to cheat and turn the sand on our glass before it runs out. Okay, that's that's what I'm going to do because, and this is another thing that you talk about Mondays. Mm. We need to smile more on Mondays. That's part of the cure mm. because I was in church ministry. And one of the biggest things you learn is Mondays are death days for a lot of pastors. You get the emails, you get the phone call. They don't like your sermon. You, you didn't baptize their child right, whatever it was. Yeah. And you get the negative. So we were taught. Yeah. Have a file on Mondays reminds you of the thanks, the praise, the concern, <gasps> and literally pull out the happy file because more pastors resign on mm. Mondays than anything else. That's so I resonate with the smile on Monday thing. Mm. Yeah, that is interesting. Mondays are, well, if we want to get literal about the day of the week, yeah, more because there's so much stress, right? The, the buildup, sometimes it's because we've had one hell of a weekend and we're yes. guys. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I have this new campaign, like I'm writing a blog post about it. You'll get an early sneak peek here. This idea about like living for the weekend or the idea that many of us will do this thing where we save up our life for like our vacation week. Yes. And then, and then many of us, and I don't even get me started. I'm going to get all hot and bothered over here about vacations because many people, 40% of Americans leave unused vacation days on the table. This is the life we're living. And, mm -hmm. and I'm not here to disparage work. You might love your work so much that you're like, to go on a vacation would ruin my life. And I'd really like to actually like psychoanalyze you, but that's different. <laughs> I want to say, are we saving up life for, again, those like just for the weekend or for the vacation or for don't even get me started on retirement, oh. deferring our existence, right? Right. Don't ask me, but I'm not planning. I have no plan. I have no exit plan. I love what I do with the people. Yeah. I love doing this. And you can tell. It's, so, it's, it's so clear. Fun. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you also get into this about squandering, mm -hmm. the squander-free life. Mm -hmm. What exactly do you mean, the squander-free? Mm -hmm. Because the squander is like, yeah, throw it away, trash can, delete. But you're actually saying go the opposite direction with it, right? Well, many of us feel like, do you ever do this where you go, wow, like I just, I look back on the summer and I feel like I didn't really do much. Like I don't have much to show for it. Like I didn't go and do the things I said I wanted to do. I don't know, go to the beach or go mm -hmm. and have a barbecue. I didn't really do much. I got caught up. Maybe it's work or whatever it is you're doing. And I feel like, I feel like I kind of squandered it or a smaller block of times easier sometimes. Like I feel like I just squandered the weekend, you know, and, and these are all little moments where you could even squander your evening where you're, you know, you spend, for me, I love mm -hmm. watching TV at night. Okay. It's my, like, I just love it. And yet it doesn't love me back if I'm doing it 17 nights in a row, you know, right. like at some point I got to get out and live. And at some point, like that's an example of squandering. Like those are week or evenings that could have been spent, even if it was just reading or, you know, going out and walking in a different neighborhood or just playing Monopoly. Um, any example would would do just to make the example. So squandering is when we get that sinking feeling like, I think I could be living life a little better. Right? Yes. Well, again, that goes back to the introduction of this amazing, fun, exuberant life that we get to live. Yes. Which I think is really underlined in all your messages, counting mm -hmm. your days, like, Make them count. Have some yeah. fun. Enjoy oh. this playground we get, right? Called <laughs> Earth. Yeah. You just reminded me of the expression of having, like, there's a zest for life, but there's also, like, a lust for life. Like, it's only when we don't have it. And I am fascinated. And I have a chapter in my book about people who've had wake-up calls that have almost died. I was going to touch on that. Go there, oh. please. Oh, good. Um, I could read your mind. Um, they know crap that we just don't know. You know, they've seen the light, maybe literally even, and this idea that they know, oh, okay, we're coming out. I'm going to, I'm going to interview you now in a minute. <laughs> it's like the idea that, um, there's one gentleman, this is an example, um, of a, of a story a friend of mine told me about his friend. So it's secondhand. This gentleman is on terminal stages of cancer, yep. like literal, like one or two months left to live. So we're talking four to eight Mondays left of life. Yeah. And this person savors his coffee every single morning because he knows he's probably got 60 left in his life. Yeah. And he looks at it and he stops and smells it and he watches the way it swirls and dries in the mug and the feel of it. 
and looks at it and savors it and talks about it like the way any other normal person would be like, dude, they're a dime a dozen. You're gonna, but wait a minute. What if we only had 30 or 60 coffees left, right? Yes. Yes. Been tell, there. Seriously. Can I ask you what tell, 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 tell. So I've been on borrowed time since I was born. Yes. So I was supposed to die at birth. So literally my whole mindset was I'm alive and I'm going to enjoy this crazy world. Yeah. Burn accident, age 10. Sat out for most of one year from sports and activity, and I was a very sports center guy. Mm -hmm. You learn mm -hmm. to enjoy life by watching your friends play football in your backyard because you can't play football. Oh. But you can commentate and pretend you're a broadcaster <laughs> watching your friends. So that was part of the imagination game. And then several years ago, I went through a liver transplant, very, 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 very close to literally. I mean, I was counting days, I was mm -hmm. counting every doctor appointment. But the doctor made a very interesting comment. You're the most fun dead guy that we know. <laughs> because I was. I was gone. Mm -hmm. But they also said, why? And I said, because mm -hmm. every day is an adventure. Oh. And I'm going to soak up every day I've got. And they said, yes. you're laughing. You're joking. You're, you're doing this. You're th and, I, and they're like, the nurses literally are fighting over who wants to come visit you because you're the funnest dead guy in the hospital. <laughs> you got more life than the rest of us. So to me, when I read and got into your stuff and I, yeah. I, and I saw your TEDx talk, I'm like, I got to talk to this gal because she is right on. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about this. The yeah. awareness of yeah. breathe in life. Yes. I First of all, thanks for sharing your stories. And it does inform, I think, so much of your perspective. It, you also reflect a sense of uh, zest for life and optimism that some of us admittedly are born with. So there are character traits that some of us come by honestly. So there's a whole nature versus nurture argument, right? So on, on a couple of things, there are people listening right now to you and going, oh yeah, this is why we listen to you because we like feed off your adventurous energy. And even if I could like suck up like 0.9% of it, I'm going to have a better day tomorrow because of you. Like use that. Some people have a tolerance where there are like the big five personality traits in psychology. And one of them is called openness to experience. Yes. Yours is pretty maxed, right? You want to suck the freaking marrow out of the bone of life, all the yes. bones, all the lies, right? Um, without sounding crude, right? And yeah, and yet other people are like, no, no, but I would like to be home and I would like to order maybe tonight. I will spice things up and I will order um, pepperoni on my pizza. And actually like that to me is actually a lovely Friday too. Um, so I want to make room for all the range. Like, you're inspiring to the max about like, live it up. And that is my message. And I'll just be honest with you. Like, I, I feel sometimes a little bit worried that because I use words like astonishingly alive, there's an implication like, and believe me, my message is rabid, right? Like I am frothing at the mouth for like, guys, time's running out, get out there, live, take the sketching course, go try the caviar, like do it all, volunteer, do all the things. And I also know how to calm down for like a quick minute and be like, and some people are not as interested in that much. And so I just will say there's room for all of us. We just need to know our own version of what astonishingly alive looks like. What makes you right. feel alive? So for you, you're tolerant. Like, can I ask you, like, what's an example of something that is on your horizon that you're just so excited for because it makes you know what makes you feel alive? Well, literally doing what I get to do here. This is one of the biggest joys. I get to meet amazing people like you. Yeah. I'm a people person. I love exploring mm -hmm. who they are. And I get to share it with the world. Yeah. You you are the center of this, not me. Mm -hmm. the, the idea is I want people to get to know who Jody is, mm -hmm. what she's about. I mean, you've already got 1.3 million people liking your mm -hmm. TEDx talk. Congratulations <laughs> on that. But there's more and there's more and that's what I want to do. So I literally mm -hmm. have fun. This, I get done and I get ramped up after a show versus like, Oh crap, that was a long <laughs> flow. I'm done. I'm the other way around. I'm like, this invigorates me. Right. You're on a high. Yeah. And, and, and then on Sunday night playbacks, I'm like, I'm in there with everything. And I'm like, people are coming. They're asking questions. I see it. This is me at my best having yeah. fun. Yeah. What I get to do in my world. Yeah. You demonstrating that. It's first of all, again, I want to compliment you because it's so clear that you are in flow. Like, you know, that concept in psychology, yeah. oh, when yeah. we're swept up in the zone, it's called, you know, you lose track of time and consciousness and it's like the best state of absorption. And yeah, you're like, oh, I'm in flow. 
So this idea about living in absorb, like an engaged life, it's the medley that I talk about around this sense that life is getting lived. Living a life worth living usually requires a little bit of um, the sense of getting out of your comfort zone. Yep. And I mean, the comfort zone is comfortable. Like, I'm not an idiot. I love a comfort zone. It's comfortable. I'm not a freak. I mean, you said I was abnormal, but I'm not that abnormal. I like my comfort zone. <laughs> but, uh, but we have to challenge ourselves and be like, but what's the dream that you might have? A little tiny inkling or a big goal or a small goal or something that if you were on your deathbed, because I got to bring everything back to yeah, the deathbed. Yeah. If you were there, lying out, hanging out, looking back at your life, but you would feel like, I wished I had done that thing. No, because... The best days that I have are the days that I know I'm spent. I put yeah. my head down and I go, this is the most exhilarating, wonderful feeling. Yeah. I have nothing left to give today. Yeah. And it's great. I get to go up and do it again tomorrow. Yeah. Now, some people also are in this space of you're glossing over the pain and the angst because you're telling people just to live life, grab mm-hmm. it all for what it's worth. Mm-hmm. And we're just glossing over and ignoring. There's real mm-hmm. pain and junk. And I don't think you're doing that at all. Mm-hmm. I think you're telling them to find a way to, again, spin it, redirect mm-hmm. it. Don't see. We're celebrating now. Look at that. <laughs> There's got to be a way that we can not get stuck in the mire, that we can yeah. look up and still have joyful, fun, positive days in the middle of the garbage. Oh, yeah. This is where I think many people do get stuck. Is it's the, the idea that either... My lot in life right now, my circumstance is so crappy that I'm going to need to wait. And then the good times will come later. And it's like, I, I do want to acknowledge pain and hardship and grief and suffering and sorrow and all the other synonyms. There are, there's no shortage, right? Yeah. Um, and this is what we signed up for when we asked to be born. Like we're going to get the medley of the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> and, um, and that's going to keep coming. And we have it within more of our control than we think. And so research is clear that our, our, state of life satisfaction, if you will. It's like this is happiness pie metaphor mm. where half the pie, like half of your tendency to be happy or unhappy, it is genetic. So sorry about your luck if, you know, I had a bipolar mother. So <laughs> thankfully I didn't get too many of her genes. Um, <laughs> however, um, and then 10, 15% are from circumstance. And many of us think it's mm-hmm. our circumstances that prevail. You know, it's because yeah. I don't have enough money to do the yacht trip or it's because I, um, you know, uh, am in this job that's a dead end job. No, it, you know, 40% of our existence and happiness is based on our own intentional action that we may or may not take. And the truth is that we're just not necessarily taking it because, again, it takes a little bit of effort, some risk sometimes. Yes. And, and it's scary. And I get it. But I, I stayed in a job for three years because I was too scared to move on, even though I desperately mm-hmm. wanted out. And there's life on the other side of it. The real life, the real life we could be living in our shortened days, just to underscore that point. Right. So you've written a book, You Only Die Mm -hmm. Once, How to Make Mm -hmm. It to the End with No Regret. So what are some of the tips? Because like you touched on, sometimes a bank account doesn't let you go on the cruise. Yeah. But there's a thousand other things you could do to find the joy. What are some of those things that you would highlight to say, you know what, life threw you a curveball. Yeah. And still have that astonishing life. Yeah. Okay. So in addition to counting your Mondays, which is always step number one, because we need to base ourselves in a little bit of that scarcity mode, admittedly. And then I love, I love a good regret test. It's like, if you were to go tonight, what would be examples? And I want a bullet point list. No no item is too small. That You'd think, oh, I always wanted to do that. I'm kind of disappointed in myself that I didn't. So write those things down because those are called pregrets. I know it's corny, but these are things that are regrets in the making. So, well, hello, you can actually do something about them starting now, but we just need more fun. Do do you, do you agree with that? Do you see that? Oh, no. I tell people I'm the biggest kid Mm. in the room. Mm -hmm. I I have to have fun. I love to have fun. I love to have a laugh. I love to hear a great story. I love to still throw a football around. I still love. I just tried skateboarding several months ago again. That was the stupidest thing I could have done. The balance was not the same and things like that. But I love still doing that. Karaoke, I love the same. People may not like it, but I love the same. I don't get out and get to do it a month. But when I do, we're cranking it up to 12, baby. (laughs) (laughs) You are living. Okay. You are an example. 
you're already, you're, you're a rarity. So in my research, the people that are in the zone, because if you take, by the way, just imagine this, if you've got the X axis is the vitality yeah. yep. and the Y axis is the meaning, you've got four yeah. quadrants, right? Mm -hmm. You are in the astonishingly alive zone. And I will share with you that only like 12% of people find themselves there. Wow. That's, that's not a lot. That's sad. That's it is. Sad. Yeah. Most people are in the meaningfully bored category, which means they've got, okay, good on meaning, like I said, but they're like, just somebody infuse a little bit of life in my life, please. Like, I want to have fun again. Joie right. de vie. Yeah. And then admittedly, there's, there is a chunk that are vitally empty where they're like, I have fun. Like I'm playing the trombone on Thursday nights and I'm trying new recipes and I'm going out with my friends, <sighs> but my job, like I have no meaning in my life. Like my life is a hollow shell. So there's a, there's a significant, like 15%. Yeah. So some people hear me no. and they see my energy and they go, you just don't slow down. Mm -hmm. Do you ever sit down, just talk and blend? And I'm like, yeah, those are the best times when I can go deep with somebody, when I can mm -hmm. sit on the back porch, when I can go for a long walk with somebody. Mm -hmm. The rich, deep conversations are just as important mm -hmm. to me to slow down and do that mm -hmm. as the other side. And I think some yeah. people pick one or the other. Yeah, I think you can do both. I do, too. So thanks for saying that, because this these dimensions are not um, mutually like, like they're not in their own camps. Like, for example, going to a um, learn to make ceramics class with a friend. I'm sure yep. you're signing up for that for Monday. Yep. Um, you might be like, oh, that's fun, right? It's like, it's a hobby. It's like a fun activity. But if you're going with a friend and while you're there, you're having chat and meaningful laughs and you're exchanging time together, that is both dimensions of feeling like the hedonic dimension, also the meaningful eudaimonic dimension. So the reason, the reason I started blabbing on about these, you know, because yeah. not only am I in love with these um, quadrants, but you asked me the question about like, what do we do? Yeah. Most people listening right now have a sense of there's that niggling of like, Ooh, yeah, I need more vitality or Ooh, yeah. The meaning one, I need more on that. And some people are right now like, Oh, I need both. And that's your starting yeah. point. Like you've got to diagnose the dead zones and figure out like, where have you flatlined? And then you get to go, well, okay, well, like, what would some options be? And usually we try and think like, you know, it's all or nothing thinking. It's like, okay, well, I got to quit my job tomorrow or I got to divorce that guy or whatever. Like I got to move to France. Well, like, <laughs> right. No, maybe, but probably not. No. Like, well, usually it's like, what's one thing you used to do that brought you joy? Yeah. Oh, I used to love, we used to sit and have, a drink and watch the sunset, but we just got busy. Well, you know what? Go watch the sunset tonight. Yes. Right? Rekindle I used to love movies. going to drive in yeah. movies. Oh. And here in Washington, D.C., there still isn't a drive, drive in movie, but we found a place. Well, in fact, it's the Kennedy Center. Kennedy mm -hmm. Center has a summit there, uh, series. Mm -hmm. They literally project onto one of the part of the building of the Kennedy Center. They have oh. this big flat area. You bring your picnics, your blankets, and you hang out, and you do an outdoor movie at the Kennedy Center. Okay. I, I would totally go, except for the bar. <laughs> I love that so much. You, that's an example. For, so many of us have little things that we've been either curious about or we used to do and like to do. And this is where I'm going to get really boring. Okay. Prepare. Okay. I can't you see know. you being boring, but bring it on. <laughs> well, it's going to go there. <laughs> we, we, we keep hoping that like the, the, the best version of our life is kind of going to like happen to us. Yeah. And like, eh, it's going to take a little bit of work. And so the, the first step in all that is like, you have to have a repository to capture these cool things that make you happy, that you like drive-ins. Like that's an example where I'm like, oh my God, I would totally add that to my list of something that would be cool to do. So I'm always a fan of like, whether you like your Excel tabs on the spreadsheet or different pages in your journal or wherever you want to capture this stuff, it needs to be captured because that's your, that's your kind of menu. When you're thinking about, hey, I think I need to spice up my life a little bit. It's like, I go to my list. And I'm like, that's right. We wanted to cook with jerk, so jerk chicken again. We haven't had jerk, like, you know, do you ever have food? You're like, we, we forgot about that whole recipe, you know, yeah. that's a very simple example on purpose yeah. because I want to make the point. We think it's a big thing that's going to help us feel more alive. Yeah. But all we can really handle is one moment to the next in life anyways. And real life is what happens between the big freaking vacations, Straight right? Straight in between. Yes. 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 So let's just make sure we've got a list at the ready so that I know if I've got an hour, 
what would be something that makes me feel alive, a conscious choice, rather than doing the default, which is checking emails or doing something that's just like sweeping the floor, doing something mundane that, yeah, I'm not going to say, like, they still need to get done. But we can just be more intentional about the way we design our limited time left. So you talk to corporations, you, mm-hmm. you, you speak, you travel, you're an author. But when you talk to the corporate realm about this, yep. is a little bit woo-woo, is a little bit mm-hmm. of, we're not going to talk about fun and life. We have the bottom line to hit. Please don't ever speak here again, Jody. Do they go <laughs> that way or they come your direction? You're hitting the nail on the head about what I was initially worried about. Cause I thought, cause that was my life was like a typical corporate, you know, leadership development yeah. consulting. And there, the answer is no. I mean, part of it is that I'm smart enough to know that like I speak the ROI language, right? So the leader who is hiring me to come in and do a sales kickoff with their team to get them motivated and feel like they're going to, you know, like, let's go kill this quarter. Yeah, I'm not an idiot. Like, I'm not going to just tap dance and talk about the Grim Reaper the whole time. Like, it's very much designed to be about how do you, yeah, still tune into the timeline. We all got a deadline. And whether the deadline is your sales goal, for example, I'm just using that as an example, or your life, like, yeah, let's use this to our advantage. And plug in and start living and performing on fire. And I also talk about legacy and that tends Mm. to get gobbled up by a lot of leaders. Like what is your leadership legacy? What do you want to leave behind? Not just because you're going to, you know, croak, but also because maybe you're going to get promoted and how do you want people to remember you as what kind of leader or what kind of colleague? So that's where, well, that's where it fits in kind of nicely into, and then retreats. Oh my gosh. Getting people talking and thinking about their bucket list as a group of executives, for example. Yes. Oh, that is the best fun. Or I'm at campfire, people talking about things they want, and then they're accountable to each other mm-hmm. for the life they want to live. It's funny as, as we're talking about this, I think of John Lasseter mm-hmm. from Pixar. Mm-hmm. John Lasseter is known for being one of the biggest kids in the world too. But as he's creating these new amazing films with Pixar, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You ever see his office? It's toys, figurines of all the characters he's played around with and created. And he literally, as he's working on new voices, new characters, his job is to pull those toys off. And it's woody and it's fuzzy and it's slinky. And he does the voices and maps out the next film that we're going to pay big money for. <sighs> but he literally becomes the child to create the great film, tell his great team how to go create it. And we go gobble it up. Yeah, that's so funny. Why don't we think of life like that for businesses? Why don't we think like this is the most fun, creative thing? Yes. I'm going to work on Monday. I can't wait to get back in there and get the mark. Yep. I love that attitude. And I'm also going to buck the the system for a quick second because I am a big fan. I mean, believe me, like that's been my business for my career is the, you know, executive side of things. And I'll also just offer a different opinion for just a minute. And that is that. We can work on the performing better as a team by having live, you know, by um, working with each other. Always noble, always a noble mission. And I also think that we need to maybe reframe how we see work fitting into our lives. I love your face. Like, oh, bring it on. (laughs) You know this. Like, we have become as a society, we put an awful lot of pressure on work to be this wellspring of our sense of purpose in life yep. and our main source of joy. And it will not fully deliver. Like it just can't, it was designed not to. And so we're going to be disappointed time and time again. And we're going to come home and think our lives suck because our jobs suck. When meanwhile, work is probably o- maybe, maybe okay for, if it's not okay, leave, like abandon that ship. If it's sinking, honey, like do not, like it will kill you. But if it's okay, my first prescription, when I used to do one-on-one coaching, it's like, why don't we talk about all the other parts of your life. And usually it's like, wait, what? There are no other parts of my life. My work is my life. And I'm like, I get you. And what if we also got you interested in stuff outside of work? Because then what that does, uh, it well rounds us as human beings. And then we get to go into work. And here's the coolest thing, I think, not just that you get to go and play in a garage band and maybe start to write the great American novel and start to get fit again, all the cool things that you might do outside work. It's that when you go to work, all of a sudden, the little stupid stuff that goes on or your attitude towards it is no longer like, this is the source of my life and all my frustration. It's like, yeah, I've sized it because it's not that big of a deal. I'm actually looking forward to my recital on the weekend for the piano Mm. I'm doing, you know, it's like, it puts everything in perspective. So I don't know, you know, what do you think about that? 
I, again, I love that idea. I mean, I just talked to a gentleman this week mm -hmm. and he was talking about signed up to be my kid's t-ball coach. Okay. He says, I get off work, I gotta put on my stuff, take my kid, and I get to coach these little kids on how to get down and grab the ball and how to get up bat and you know, get up on the bat and you know, swing at the t-ball. He said, these kids are having so much fun. They don't know what they're doing. They're spinning around. Their hats are falling off. Their pants are barely hanging on. He goes, I'm having more fun doing this thing that I would never, ever dream I wanted to do because he's a business executive. But he's like, this is the best thing. Yes. He's and he's like, got maybe I'm three tired. years, maybe <laughs> three years of that time. And he's like, I'm going to drink this up, buddy. Uh, thank you. This example is so freaking perfect. There are so many opportunities to get sparked to feel alive again. And it can be in so many facets of life. So like, let's not forget, you know, you've got your leisure, your recreation, you've got your social life, you've got different family aspects, you've got your health, personal growth. Some of us feel uh, like, oh shoot, I love to learn, but like, wait a minute, when, when was the last time I took a course? You're like, well, there's your thing that you could do next. Look online and find a cool class, you know? Mm. So, oh my gosh, I, uh, I love this. And it doesn't have to be big. It can just be so one, one little step at a time towards feeling more alive. Now, I mentioned your book several times. Mm -hmm. Here it is. You only die once. Mm -hmm. Tell us what they're going to find when they hit the QR code, get the phone out tonight, scan the QR code, and what are they going to find and learn? Oh, I appreciate you asking in the first place. Thank you. Well, there are, it's, it's a, it's a ride, let me tell you. It's meant to be really interactive, like with you. So it's all the questions about you. It starts with the pre-mortem, like let's let's kind of, you know, dissect your life before you die um, in an autopsy that's pain-free. Let's figure out what's working for you, what's not, where do you feel dead, where do you feel alive? And then we go on this little journey about like, let's look at how death can bring you back to life. Mm -hmm. And then we talk about regrets, we talk about the wake-up calls, and then I really get you thinking about where do you want to widen your life with vitality, deepen it with meaning. And then I don't know about you, but I get so annoyed by the idea about like, it's all talk, no action, like lots of theory, and then you're left finishing like, okay, but what do I want to, what do I do next? I get a little bit fanatical about what I call a paint by numbers approach. Like, let's make mm. a plan. Let's get you making a plan where you feel like when you finish that last page, you're like, I know exactly what I'm going to do now to live like I mean it. Get a little bit excited about that, Jody. Come on. I don't well, think you're really excited about this topic at all. <laughs> yeah. I'm just <laughs> snooze fest over here. <laughs> As we come down to the finish line, I, I, there is this thing you talk about of helping people diagnose the dead zones of life. Mm -hmm. You literally help them look, I'm guessing, through their window and go, what's the thing that I'm, I would think the dead zones are on their, their time suck, their energy sucks, their things that literally pull you in that zombie state. Mm -hmm. How do you help them diagnose that without poking the bear, without making it sound like, boy, you're a dummy for doing that? <laughs> Right. Yeah. Ideally, we don't want to totally isolate people. Um, but I agree there. I have a there's a questionnaire in the book that's 68 questions long and it's it's super fast and it's meant to be cheeky. And um, like everything, I, clearly my tone is reverent on purpose to make it accessible, I hope. And it's like it covers all the domains of life that we've sort of alluded to. Right. Like what about does your relationship a couple questions about your relationship or, you know, lack thereof love life or your social life or your career or your, your finances or your, your environment around your home and your life, your hobbies, or what, what are those things? It's designed to get you in a visual way seeing this is the stuff that I am like, I'm on fire. Okay. I'm going to well, go keep stoking those fires bonfire, baby. But then when you're realizing, ooh, I've got a lot over here that are dead, like maybe it's my health. Like I'm feeling really, I love, I'm lacking the energy to yeah. live a life full of vitality. Like it's hard to fathom feeling like you're going to go out and seize the day if you're like, Bleh. I just get home and I'm exhausted, right? Yeah. And that's an area like, okay, that's a dead zone that might glare, that, that might stand out to you as, I think I need to work on this one first. Because we all have to pick one thing to do at a time. We can't be mm -hmm. like... I'm going to work on eight domains of my life. Like, slow down. You will, you will die trying. And that is noble, but not what we're after. <laughs> I want us to pick one thing. And usually, like, diagnosing that dead zone, it does tend to stand out like, yeah, I can't deny it anymore. Like, it's my recreation. I, I don't Like, leisure time. Like, I don't even know what that is anymore. And I think I might want to figure that out. So what's the one piece of advice you want people to take away from today 
Mm. Count your Mondays. You're, you're, you're counting forward. Yeah. It's not morbid. No. It's a helpful, joyful thing. But yep. what's the one thing that you want to stick a pin in and land a plan? Okay. Make the Grim Reaper your buddy. Don't avoid him. Don't not talk about it. Don't change the subject. Don't click off this program right now. Acknowledge. He is a scary MFer, but he is out there to help us live like we mean it. Keep him close. Jody Wilman. Remember the name. Go get the book. Again, I think the concept is wonderful. And your TEDx exploded at 1.3 million viewers. Let's go get a couple million more for her. Jody, thank you for taking the time to be here today. It's been a pleasure. Oh, Rich, you're great. Thank you. So we wind down thinking about counting Mondays. We're counting forward. And let me add in there, because one thing that I've learned in my personal journey is I like the phrase, I'm good to go. I'm counting forward, and I want to celebrate. I want to be remembered. I want to have people know, yeah, he's a bit of a nut job. He laughs a lot, has a good time, and that's a good thing. So don't think about the greenery, but don't think about the finality. Think about putting the cherry on top and wrapping up a really fun, really great life. I hope you've enjoyed tonight's edition of Rock the Stage Show. Don't forget, every Sunday night, we're back here once again with amazing guests, authors, influencers, TV, actors, you name it. We're bringing you the best from around the globe. Join us every Sunday night on the PPN, the Public Place Network, as we stream at 7 p.m. with our premiere party and on YouTube. Or you can join in the live chat on Sunday nights, add your comments, questions, and enjoy the celebration right along on Sunday nights. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you back here again next week for another edition of Rock the Stage Show.